Welcome back to Masterminds Lesson. Today we are talking about the signs and symptoms of psychosis. This lecture video is the part two of my lecture video on psychosis. Now let's get right into it. The signs and symptoms of psychosis can be broadly categorized into two domains. We have the positive signs of psychosis and we have the negative signs of psychosis. I will start with the positive signs of psychosis. The positive signs of psychosis are those signs and symptoms that a person develops after they get psychosis. In other words, they are those symptoms that are present in individuals with psychosis but are absent in people who are not having psychosis. So you can think of the positive signs of psychosis as an add-on symptoms to a person after they develop psychosis. Meanwhile, the negative signs and symptoms of psychosis are those signs and symptoms that get subtracted from an individual after they develop psychosis. You can also define a negative sign or symptom of psychosis as those signs and symptoms or those behaviors that are present in the ordinary or normal population but are absent from individuals with psychosis. Under the positive signs of psychosis, we've gotten four different sections. We have hallucinations, delusions, disorganized thinking, and disorganized behavior. Let's start with hallucinations. Hallucinations are false sensory perceptions that occur without the presence of an external stimulus. So hallucinations, they are false sensory perceptions that occur without the presence of an external stimulus. I will start by explaining the concept of perceptions. Perception is when you become aware of something. So let's assume we have um, a human here and we have someone watching this human. Okay, so um, this is the person watching this human. This will be the person's eye. And then um, that's the person's brain. Okay, so this human, um, that is Elisha, is the stimulus. And then this is the eye of the observer. Let's call the observer um, Brenda. Brenda is looking at Elisha. So um, Elisha becomes the stimulus and Brenda becomes the observer. Now the um, stimulus coming from Elisha, that is his visual um, appearance, will hit the eye of Brenda, which will go into um, the visual cortex of Brenda's brain and um, go like this. And then in Brenda's brain, this visual stimulus will be interpreted as a human being, in this case, Elisha. So that's like um, a generic um, process, how perceptions come about. But in the case of hallucinations, this stimulus, that is Elisha, is out of the picture. Elisha is out of the picture. Meanwhile, Brenda's brain, for whatever reason, is still perceiving that there is something there that seems so real to Brenda. That is why hallucinations are false sensory perceptions. So there are perceptions. Meanwhile, these perceptions are false because there is no external stimulus. And typically, hallucinations occur in clear consciousness. It wouldn't occur when an individual is sleeping or when the individual is not awake. It occurs in clear consciousness. And the individual typically does not have any control over the hallucinations they are having. They come by themselves. The individual doesn't cause the hallucinations to happen. Since this is just a map up of the signs and symptoms of psychosis, I wouldn't really go into details with hallucinations, but understand that hallucinations occurs in the five sensory modalities. So, um, you know, we have five sense modalities. We have sense of sight, sense of um, smell, sense of taste, sense of hearing, and then um, sense of touch. All right, so sense of sight. 
any hallucination occurring in the sensory modality of sight is called visual hallucination. That is when someone sees something without anything being there. In this case, um, Brenda seeing Elisha, even though there is no Elisha in the picture. Um, the sensory um, modality of smell, any hallucination occurring in the sensory modality of smell is called olfactory hallucination. With a sense of touch, we have tactile hallucination. With a sense of hearing, we have auditory hallucination. Auditory hallucination. And with a sense of taste, we have gustatory hallucination. All right, I will stop with hallucination for now. Uh, because I wouldn't want to go into much details uh, with hallucination. I'm going to capture that in another video where I'll be discussing the positive signs and symptoms of psychosis. So let's move on to delusions. We are done with hallucinations. The next thing we are going to talk about is delusions. By definition, delusions are fixed false beliefs that are not amenable to change in light of conflicting evidence. As always, we are going to underline the keywords and then we go through them. Delusions are faced false beliefs that are not amenable to change, not amenable to change in light of conflicting evidence. When we speak of delusions, you need to understand that they are about beliefs. These beliefs are fixed. That means they are unwavering, they don't change. And these beliefs are typically false. Meanwhile, when you present conflicting evidence of these beliefs to the person having these kind of delusions, their delusions are still not going to change, even though you have shown them evidence. To understand delusions better, let's talk about beliefs for a moment. People generally have beliefs. There are people who believe in a supernatural being, such as God. People believe in the existence of different countries. People believe in the existence of different planets. And people believe in the existence of um, tables. Meanwhile, a person who is delusional about their belief about, for instance, planets, may believe they come from mass and not it. And regardless of how much evidence you present to them about the non-existence of life on mass, they will still be having this fixed false belief that they come from mass and not it. So that is the extent to which someone needs to be fixed to their false belief before they can be termed as delusional. The mere fact that someone believes in something doesn't make them delusional. They become delusional based on the intensity of their belief and how unwavering their belief may be despite presenting them with conflicting evidence. And delusions, of course, has also gotten categories. We have a lot of examples of delusion, but broadly speaking, delusions can be categorized into two categories. That is bizarre delusions, and non-bizarre delusions. I wouldn't be going into much details with bizarre delusions and non-bizarre delusions. I'll just explain it to the point where you will understand because I have a lot to cover here. And like I said, I'm going to cover hallucinations and delusions, disorganized thinking and disorganized behavior in another lecture video. For the purpose of understanding delusion better, Bizarre delusions are those delusions whose content can never be possible in the context of the person's culture and our lives as humans. Let me give an example of a bizarre delusion. Remember I spoke about someone believing they are from Mars and not Earth. As it stands, there is no life on Mars or at least 
human beings cannot naturally exist on Mars. So a person coming from Mars is impossible in our culture and in our state as humans. If I have belief or if someone has the belief that they come from Mars and not Earth, the content of this delusion can be seen as bizarre. Therefore, it's a bizarre delusion. Let me give another example. From basic anatomy, we know everyone has a heart. And then the function of the heart is to pump blood. We all know the heart is made up of cardiac muscles. And then the function of the cardiac muscle is to help the heart beat to transport blood all over the body. If I come to you one day and I say, I don't have a heart. In fact, I don't have cardiac muscles forming my heart but my heart is made up of stone. It will be very difficult for you to conceive the possibility of my heart being a stone or my heart not composed of cardiac muscles but made up of stones. It's not possible. It's inconceivable. It's not possible and cannot be understood in our state as humans. Therefore, the content of this whole delusion that I'm having is bizarre. Therefore, it becomes a bizarre delusion. I hope that makes bizarre delusion clear. Let's go to non-bizarre delusions. Non-bizarre delusions are those delusions that are not true, but they are very possible in our context as humans and in the culture of the person experiencing it. If I come to you and I say I am being um, monitored by the police or the police is actively out to get me, for a crime I haven't committed. It is possible that the police may be looking for me for a crime I haven't committed because someone says something about me which is not true. But in my case, it isn't true that the police is coming after me. Meanwhile, I am having this fixed false belief, this strong conviction that the police is coming after me. So this becomes a non-bizarre delusion. It is possible in my experience as a human, it is possible in my culture, as um, a human that the police may be looking after me, but it is not true. It is a fixed false belief. And despite the number of evidence presented to me to show that the police is not after me, I still believe that the police is looking for me. Let me give another example of a non-bizarre delusion. Let's take Frederick for instance. This is Frederick. Frederick is so distrustful and so suspicious of the actions and the intentions of other people such that he always believes that someone wants to poison him. So whenever Ferry goes to the bar to have a drink, he makes sure that he sits by his table and finishes his drink before he gets up. In the event where he has to get up to um, use a toilet, for instance, and he comes back, he will throw his drink away and order for a new one because he strongly believes that someone has spiked his drink with something that is supposedly meant to kill him. In as much as this is far-fetched, it is possible for someone to poison you in a bar. But in his case, in the case of Frederick, no one really is following him to attempt to poison him. But he has this strong conviction, this strong fixed false belief that someone will certainly poison him in a bar. So it is under these bizarre and non-bizarre delusions where we can put um, referential delusion, grandiose delusion, paranoid delusion, erotomanic delusion and all of those kinds of delusions. But like I said, we are not going into much details. Uh, this is just an introductory lecture video on psychosis. When we are treating delusion into details, I'm going to put all of these examples of delusions under the two main um, categories of delusions. This brings us to the end of today's lecture video. We are going to continue talking about the signs and symptoms of psychosis in another lecture video where I'll talk about disorganized behavior, disorganized thinking and then the negative signs and symptoms of psychosis. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with others who will benefit from this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Master Mind Nelson. Class has ended.